Scott from the neighborhood council. My name is John Craig, and I'm the president. Um, we have Connor Finley of North and Waterfront.com videotaping this. So, um, anybody else from the media, let's see what we have. We may arrive later, but welcome. Uh, at this time, I'd like to have the whole fall side of the thread for me. John Craigman. Sean Hennessy. Michael Bonetti. Carmen Corrino. Thank you. And uh, Carmine, if you could read the meeting room. Oh, please. The meeting will be conducted according to parliamentary rules. The president will have the final word on the conduct of the meeting and will cast a vote only in the event the rest of the council reaches a tie. The president will recognize a speaker to make their presentation a statement, and then he will permit the council to ask questions. We will now open the floor to questions from the audience, and each audience member should introduce themselves by name and street address. No person will speak until they have been recognized by the president. All speakers will be confined to the time limits. Voting will be done by ballot, and the results of all votes will be announced at the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And one note on the speaking. Um, it's difficult sometimes to hear, so if you wouldn't mind standing and, and uh, being a little bit louder when you speak, we appreciate it up here on the council, and, and I'm sure Connor would appreciate it for the video. Um, just a few things to report from, from, uh, from myself here. North Bennett Street Schools open houses this Friday and Saturday, so you can look at their website to see how you can attend that. Um, the NEAD and State Representative Aaron Mikowitz are doing the basketball bonanza this Friday from 6 to 10 here at the Mazzaro for the kids. Uh, uh, ages seven, eight or seven or eight to eighteen. So um, for that, uh, hockey is beginning this Saturday. We have Dan Toscano here that's coming in again, which is highly successful. So if there's anyone that's interested, be sure to contact him before this weekend. Um, and then finally, we do have pamphlets for Toys for Tots, which again is run by Tony Gelardi, former council member. Um, is there anything specific you want to note about that while you're here? So it's. Um Bring a toy. We're having the event uh, December 1st from 6 to 9. My mother is cooking the majority of the food. Yeah. I'm hosting. There'll be beer, wine, Prosecco, and lots and lots of food. Um, bring a new unwrapped non-violent toy. Um, the Marines will pick everything up on December 2nd, and usually they have to bring two vans to pick up all the toys. So every year it, it gets bigger and bag, bag better, and um, we everybody really looks forward to it in the neighborhood, and I hope you all can come. I think Tony's always a great event, so we have a uh, regional review. Um, at this time, if I could turn to uh, Danielle to offer a resident parking and traffic committee report, please. Hi. Um, so we're still working with the Boston Transportation Department to put into place the pilot parking program that will increase fines for non-residents during um, game and event nights at the Garden City Hall Plaza. So we've sat with Boston Transportation and uh, Sal and Martinez helping move through the channels with that. Um, and just an update, a lot of people are seeing the issues we're having on Commercial Street with the building of the bike lane. Um, the residents met with Public Works who are changing some of the markings while construction's going on right at the <coughs> commercial and charter. Um, and they're moving the lanes in so that they'll avoid some of the overlapping while buses are turning on that corner over the double line. So hopefully that will help. Um, and then they plan on looking into, after the construction's almost done, looking into um, moving the tour bus parking that's there. So we'll avoid that as an issue ongoing. Thank you. And Sean for the uh, public safety. Hey everybody. A uh, really quiet month uh, here in the North End. Uh, seven uh, larcenies and uh, one larceny for motor vehicle. Uh, among the incidents, um, on Hanover Street, a blind man was scammed of $120. Uh, he had $120 in his hand, asked a friend to count it. Uh, the friend took the money and they jumped in a cab. Um, yeah, right? Right. Um, the person ordered eBay, uh, a couple sneakers from eBay and, uh, through PayPal and uh, arrived, uh, basically fake sneakers arrived, so a scam on eBay. Um, a couple boxes were delivered on Unity Street. The boxes were opened. Uh, after they were delivered, so police were reminding everyone to, uh, if, if you're not home, deliver it to a, have it delivered to a friend or to a business that you trust. Uh, bike theft, the bike was wrapped around a pole uh, that was taken. Uh, and now a couple of incidents where they're not sure if it was a theft or not. On Prince Street, a ring was missing from a hole from the kitchen table. They're not sure if it was lost or stolen. A similar incident on 130 Prince, a wallet was missing, not sure if it was lost or stolen. Uh, then on Halloween, a victim uh, met a homeless man. A homeless man said, hey, can I help carry your groceries up into your apartment? 
She said, sure, no problem. So that happens. Then she lets the gentleman uh, watch television. Next thing you know, um, $700 in cash is taken, along with six bottles of prescription drugs. Um, and then there was a, a larceny from a motor vehicle. A person left uh, keys with uh, the parking attendant. And uh, when, when the person came back, uh, iPhone was gone, laptop was gone. Now police are looking at the parking attendant video just to see if they can figure out what happened. And then there was a, um, a, a arrest for assault and battery. You may have heard about this. On Endicott Street, a couple of weeks ago, there was a man who, was, uh, who had a knife, who was waving it around. Um, and police were called. It happened near Parzielli's. Uh, it happened on Endicott Street. A couple hours later at Parzielli's Bakery, a man who met the, fit the description was, uh, was seen at the bakery, so police came. When they arrived, the um, man didn't have uh, a knife, uh, but I think he admitted to having a knife earlier. So they asked him where he lived, and they, tra tra they traced him back to a homeless shelter. Uh, lastly, police were talking about how more and more people are leaving their cars unlocked, that sometimes people just walk, walk down a street and just try to open the doors and see what's open, and then once it's open, it's, it's free range. So just reminding everyone to uh, have the cars locked. You may feel like you're safe, but police are you know, saying that it's pretty easy to do if people walk down the street open the car doors and just take whatever's inside. So, Other than that, our uh, next public meeting is going to be, a public safety meeting will be on December 1st. Great, thank you. And for the Greenway uh, report, we want to anticipate uh, Betty Gagnon, who uh, mural is up down in Dewey Square, which is by South Station. So that's been completed. You can certainly check it out down there. The Dewey Square Farmer's Market, as well as the Carousel, they're still running for a few weeks. And um, the next board meeting will be on Tuesday, December 13th, and they are open to the public. So if you have any issues or concerns directly related to the Greenway, then be sure to, to, um, to join us at that time. Um, and then other than that, there's nothing really to report. Now I can turn to the <coughs> Office of Local Elected Officials, and I see State Representative Aaron Michael, if you want to begin with, would you like to discuss this evening? Sure. Um, President. What happened, first off? <laughs> Let's start there. It wasn't, as I said the other night, it's not the election. <laughs> um, you no, know, I voted, heard my... You voted for Trump. No, I didn't vote for Trump. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I tore my bicep uh, tendon while working out, and so I had surgery on Monday. It's going to be a couple, weeks, a couple weeks of rest and a couple weeks of rehab. I'll hopefully be as good as no. But, uh, and for... Thank you for having me here tonight. I appreciate it. And I uh, and for those that saw me the other night, uh, I knew it. Some of the some of it's going to be a little repetitive, so I apologize. But I uh, I wanted to come down to both neighborhood associations and and uh, give a little update on a couple issues that you know a lot of us have been working on. Um, uh, but first and foremost, uh, uh, on behalf of myself and I, you know Luigi's here from Senator Von Corey's office. You know we both are very thankful and appreciative of uh, of the uh, election day, uh, obviously. It was it was a hectic thing on the top of the ticket, uh, but for both of us, uh, you know, it was a, a very uh, happy day for us to get reelected. Uh, you know, for me, uh, it's the fifth time I've been on the ballot, and uh, you know, you never take these things for granted, and you're very appreciative of the great opportunity that you get to uh, to serve. Uh, you know, for me, it's been an honor to be your state rep and uh, to be your to be your state rep for the next two years will be an honor. And uh, the thing that I always say is that you're not with, with me. Uh, you may, may we may not agree 100 percent of the time. You know, life would be boring if that was certainly the case. Uh, but you know, I, I promise you that you know I'm going to be attentive to your issues, uh, diligent to uh, to the neighborhood's uh, uh, needs, and uh, you work as hard as I possibly can uh, to you know to provide that service uh, to you. So I, I it's from my deep down in my heart, I really greatly appreciate everybody took the time to vote and uh, and gave me a vote that day. Uh, I also want to you know I, I came here for the first meeting uh, that. That the president had, and it was a hectic meeting, obviously, because it was the, the nursing home meeting. But I didn't get a chance to actually say, I want to thank you all for serving on the neighborhood council. Uh, you know, I was a former member of the neighborhood council myself, and uh, for four years, I know there's other people in this room that have done it as well uh, for just as long, if not longer. And, uh, you know, it's an important role that you guys play uh, in our neighborhood, and I appreciate it, you know, the time that you take. You know, you're, not, you're not getting paid very well, I'm sure. And, uh, and uh, so I know that there's a uh, you know, it's a th sometimes thankless, but you know, important role uh, that you guys play. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, the three things I wanted to kind of touch on, and I'll start with, you know, I'll do one, and we'll take questions, and we'll go for the uh, nurse, the nursing home. A little update on the nursing home. Uh, an update on what we're doing with uh, Airbnb uh, legislation. 
uh, going forward into the next session, and then a uh, update on a piece of legislation that I filed earlier this year uh, related to uh, state land uh, on, on the corner across in Hanover Street. Um, first and foremost, the nursing home. Uh, as many of you know, uh, partners in Spalding that decided that they wanted to move on from being a nursing home operator in the North End. Uh, just this past uh, May, made the announcement to the neighborhood. Uh, it was very contentious <coughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, a lot of people were upset, including including myself, including many of the elected officials. Uh, and uh, you know, a bunch of was organized and having having discussions uh, internally about what to do going forward. Um, we we had a recent hearing that Council Lamatina uh, hosted at City Hall back in September, uh, and added the uh, in relation to this in relation to the uh, LDA, which is the Land Disposition Agreement that is held through the BRA on that property uh, through the urban renewal process. Uh, and to the credit of the BRA, and especially Mayor Walsh, uh, the, uh, Brian Golden, from the, the director of the BRA, uh, at that meeting basically got up and said that they are not going to lift the land disposition agreement on that property, which restricts it to become a nursing home. Uh, based off that meeting uh, that we had, Spalding and Partners recognized the need to, to, to keep that as a nursing home in some sh way, shape, or form, which hasn't been finalized yet, uh, and decided to open up discussions on, on other other uh, prop, excuse me, other operators coming in and taking over that, that facility. Uh, they have had a number of, of uh, potential suitors. Uh, they've actually gotten to the point where they have uh, three or four, I don't want to quote directly, but three or four uh, offers that have been put in place for that property uh, from different other potential operators across the combo. Uh, they have assured me that they are going to, they have not made the final decision on what to do going forward, but they have assured me that they are going to come back in front of the neighborhood in some uh, way, shape, or form, uh, uh, in some regard. I don't, I don't know if it's going to have their own meeting or whatnot, but they are going to come back to the neighborhood and give an update on what they're going to do going forward before they make a final decision uh, to hear community input. Uh, but I feel very hopeful. Uh, I want to credit Senator Boncori, uh, Council Lamatina, Mayor Walsh, uh, for uh, for their for their advocacy, I want to credit a lot of the people that uh, were part of the steering committee, uh, a lot of local uh, people, neighborhood people that uh, got together and you know, organized uh, really well uh, to move this agenda forward. We are in a much better place than we were, say uh, back in May or June. Uh, we are not over the goal line yet. Uh, we got kind of in the red zone uh, in, in essence, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, but I feel a lot more comfortable knowing. Uh, where we are today than we were back in back in the year, back in the spring. Uh, so that's that's uh, uh, where it stands right now. Uh, I'm open to any discussion or questions, you know, related to that. If not, we can move on. Go to the next one. Can I just open it to the council first, and then uh, we can ask the others. No, just say one thing. Sure. What you said tonight, you actually said at the resident association. What I don't understand is this is just a few people here tonight. There is only a few people at the resident association. Why didn't we call for a neighborhood meeting so people that don't have computers, can't get into math site, uh, they can't get out probably get a paper or read what's going on. Why didn't we hold a neighborhood council for every single resident here to know what's actually happening with that person? You know how strong I am to this. Of course. No, no. I, I think should, this room should have been packed only for this tonight. They're entitled to know what is happening to the future of those residents in that nursing home. And, and, and I think that partners in, in Spalding have said to me that, that they are going to do that when they're when they're ready before they're gonna before they're gonna make a final decision on what to do. I, I you know I'm just giving you an update from what I've heard and what I and what I and what I've spoke to. Um, you know I don't speak for them uh, certainly as you know and, and, and I've disagreed with them you know many a times throughout this process but uh, I you know the fact well, one thing one piece I haven't added that I didn't have that I did say on the other night is that uh, when they were when they were gonna do the transfer of of because there was two facilities one was in the north end and one was in West Roxbury. They were closing both those facilities. The original proposal was to close both those <coughs> facilities and move to Brighton. Uh, in order to do that, they had to file with the Department of Public Health uh, on terms of the transfer of these of these beds and, uh, for each facility going to going to uh, Brighton. They're moving forward with the West Roxbury piece, obviously. The West Roxbury did not did not put up the fight that the North End did. Uh, so they're moving forward with the West Roxbury West Roxbury piece. Our piece they have withheld 
um, at the request of the local elected officials, they have withheld uh, the application uh, for, for the Department of Public Health until, they said till the end of November, but they also believe that maybe kind of until the end, until they get the settled, until they make a final decision on what to do. Uh, so, you know, I, I think by doing that, they've showed good faith in terms of, how, of, of operating. You know, we're trying to find the right uh, operator for us uh, in this neighborhood. Uh, and so I think at this point, we're going to wait until they come back and make a, and have a final conversation about what they want to do. Uh, but I agree. You know, when that when that day comes, you, you I, will, I will be part of the groups that are trying to get many, as many people there as possible. But I still think there are not there are a lot of knockdown residents that have questions, and maybe they're the questions that sh they can ask you. And if you don't have an answer, maybe you should ask parties. I mean, we there's certain people looking for people to buy it. What are they asking for? Well, that I don't know, and it's, I mean, a, it's a private company, and I don't they think they're going to share that with me. No. You know, so, so. Well, but I agree with you. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I know where you're, I, I appreciate your frustration, sir. Now, you mentioned the other night that COVID wins this bid, so to speak, has to put a nurse on it. By the restrictions of the LDA, uh, the building has to remain a nurse home. You know, but it could, again, it could be some type of different form yes. of some sort, but that's, that's the idea. So, any other questions or comments related to that? And they break down how what, what percent would be nursing and what percent would be rehab. Not yet. Not yet. Is that that's still a flux? I assume. Um, I don't want to speak for them. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. Well, I, think, the I think there are all different options on the table that outside of the outside of what is restricted through the LDA. So the L L LDA just says nursing home, but doesn't uh, restrict to the covenant of you know X percent nursing home, X percent rehab center. That that could change. That yeah, possible percentage possibly. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want again. I don't want to verify that. Either. I have a quick but question. So, uh, if I remember from City Hall, what could happen though is that if they don't find anybody with an interesting bid for them, they could literally just shut it down and leave it unoccupied until they make a decision too, right? I think they could choose to do that. I think they have seen the idea that that politically, uh, for them, would not be a good idea. Uh, you know, I think that they've they've recognized the neighborhood's concern and needs. And I think that they have, uh, you know, have made a decision. At least, listen, they could be they could be saying one thing and then doing another. I don't I don't believe that to be the fact right now, uh, because when they came here originally, they came here saying telling us they were closing. You know, I mean, so they've obviously changed that too. Uh, and I think that they are looking actively to try to move on. They they are not going to be here anymore. They have made a decision. They are moving out of this out of this facility some way, shape, or form. Uh, but. I think their concern now is to try to find someone that they can hand this off to um, in an appropriate manner. And listen, it's 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 a negotiation. You know, it's a business. So they're, they, you know, I think some people are frustrated by the fact that you know they maybe are going to make some money off this. You know, to to, to whatever they create. I'm not worried about that necessarily. Me, me personally, I don't want to speak for everyone. But I'm, I'm personally just more concerned about making sure that that stays in nursing home at the end of the day. Michael. Are they still accepting people as far as like the nursing home part, not just the rehab uh, for people to come in? I know people have gone in there, um, but yeah, I, I don't. I think more on the rehab side, not not necessarily on the nursing home side. Has there been any discussion, Aaron, about again way early? But is there a thought, big picture, that when the new transfers of the ownership, a lot of frustrations the last time we had a meeting was that North End felt that they're boxed out. They try to get you know, loved ones in there, but. We're told you know, no room at the end uh, for whatever reason. Um, is there talk about opening up the, the the doors a little bit more to just allow more residents to be able to get in there? Yeah, I, I, I think the first concern is to, to to keep it a nursing home. The second, well, after after that is completed, I think the second will be to make sure that whoever whoever does take it over um, handles it a little bit differently uh, than was previously done uh, in, in the short period of time. I, I, Thing I, one of the things I was critical about partners and and uh, and Spalding was in, in relation and related to this is that you know uh, one of my jobs when I was when, before I before I ran for rep and even when I was rep for a short period of time uh, was to advocate for constituents to get in there and we had a very you know back I don't want to say back in the day but a little like you know over ten years ago or whatever we were very easily able to get people in there then all of a sudden a couple of years ago. That stopped, and that became a lot more challenging. And what frustrated me the most about this whole ordeal was was being told that things were full and that people weren't available. And then when they announced they were going to close, they told us that they weren't even at full capacity, that they had 30 beds open. That's what drove me personally crazy. 
uh, because I, I didn't think that that was, uh, you know, I think there was some, some dis, uh, it was disingenuous in terms of maybe not when 30, not maybe not at the back end, but more towards on the front end when we were having these conversations about trying to get people in. So, you know, my hope and my, you know, I'm going to advocate to make sure whoever, whoever, if someone takes us over, whoever takes it over, uh, will end up being much more, uh, uh, make, make it as convenient as possible for neighbors to get in there as easily as they possibly can. I was just to say, uh, as far as when you say it's going to stay, it's going to stay some type of this role. Can you elaborate on that? Like, said, what possible scenarios could come out? Well, I, th I think that it depends on what the final deal is. You know, between partners and whomever. Uh, and so, you know, I think the, the, the details will, you know, will will get ironed out as time goes on. And I and again, I don't want to speak for them, so it, it will be more something that they'll have to try to answer to when when we're when they finally come to some type of agreement with someone that let them kind of know well, exactly what it is. Uh, you know, uh, I, don't, I, I think that they're going to try to do something <coughs> as, as amenable to the, to the neighborhood as possible. So. And then as far as they stack it goes, if they were to transfer to the new owner, I understand that there's nothing that you promise or anything like that, but I know that some of the patients have a strong relationship with whoever's overseeing them right now, and that's going to play a big part in their health. So going forward, I'm going to try to make an effort to keep or transfer staff over to a new uh, company if they take it over, or is there? I, I can't. I personally can't answer yeah, that. Unfortunately, uh, it's um, it really depends on how the health thing gets. So I know that they there are patients that are in there that are very concerned about losing their caretaker, or you know, or wanting to stay with their caretaker. I know that's been part of conversations uh, between people, you know, between families and and, uh, and, and partners. So, but it's certainly an issue. You know. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for our state rep? All right. Well, okay. Thank you. Congrats. Well, no, I had the two other things. Two, two, oh, okay. Two, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come off? That's right. Yes. <laughs> no, the two other things. Uh, Airbnb. Uh, we're going to be filing a, a new piece of legislation at the at the beginning of the year when when filing session starts. Our sessions, our full our full formal session start in January. Filing bills start happening in early January. And uh, we are going to be filing a, a new piece of legislation that is not going to be exactly what we filed two years ago. I think we've learned a lot over the last two years about this issue and some of the issue and some of the challenges. Um, it's a maturing issue that originally uh, not many people, even in my, not many of my colleagues, not many people in government had an understanding of. I think there is a lot better understanding now two years later. Uh, I think we have a, an appetite to get something done. And it's not just going to be necessarily, uh, there's two pieces to it. One is the regulation, one is the taxation. Uh, there is a, you know, I think we could have gotten the taxation piece done last session, uh, but there was a belief that if once you do the taxation piece, it would have been very hard to come back and do the regulation piece. And for me personally, and knowing a lot of, a lot of the issues that we deal with uh, related to Airbnb in this neighborhood, I think the regulation piece is much more important uh, to kind of set a framework uh, around this industry, which is completely unregulated at the moment uh, and needs to have some type of, you know, some common sense of, you know, uh, framework around it. Uh, and so that's something that we are working on currently uh, from my office uh, and are going to file something at the end of the, uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm open to suggestions or comments or, or any, any uh, tidbits of information uh, related to that. We're, we're, we're doing extensive research in terms of what's going on. I know Council Lovatina is having a hearing at some point. I don't have they announced have they announced a date? No date yet, but it's going to be hopefully in December. In December, yeah. So I know Council Lovatina is uh, uh, working on this. Uh, from the city perspective, uh, uh, or driving the bus a little bit on the city's perspective, and so uh, you know I'll be working with them. Uh, I think we're going to try to create a framework in the in the legislation, uh, and what we file isn't necessarily going to be the end because it's going to have to go through the legislative process, you know, through com new committee process and whatnot. But I think we're we did it two years ago. It was more just a conversation starter. This one, this time, we're actually a little more educated in what we're doing. But we're, whatever we end up doing, I think we're going to try to give the municipalities the tools to be able to handle this issue. Uh, from a municipality standpoint as well as from a state uh, from a state perspective uh, uh, in particular because you know what's good in Boston isn't necessarily going to work down the Cape uh, or somewhere out in the Berkshires things are a lot different obviously the short-term rental Airbnb uh, market has been has grown tremendously in Boston uh, and in particular in this neighborhood uh, or in downtown Boston in general so I know that there's a lot of concern uh, and so it's something that you you have us working on and I'm open to any questions or comments related to that as well. In a nutshell, um, what's the Reader's Digest version of, of what you think should be in that bill? So I haven't finalized everything yet, but you know I think the, the some of the, the main focus or one of the main focuses is going to be on transparency. On if you want to if you want to be a short-term rental, 
uh, host or a, you know you want to operate a short-term rental that you're at least transparent to not just like for instance your building owner your condo association um, you know right now there is no law outside of maybe what, whatever's in your lease that would restrict it uh, you know I've, I've had a, I had a property owner in this neighborhood a good property owner but not someone who lives in this neighborhood who owns a couple of properties and I, the story I tell is that when he when we were first doing our research on this I just looked up his I looked up some addresses and his his couple units popped up in his building and he was gonna have a pro like I went to him and basically asked him about it. he had no idea now, I don't think he was playing cute I think he just didn't I think he really didn't have any clue about it uh, and that to me is an issue you know where the property owner should have an understanding of what's going on going on in their property uh, and there should be some mechanism whether it's filing with the city whether it's filing with the state uh, that allows you know these things to get uh, filtered out condo associations as well you know they there there have been many times in a lot of these buildings a lot of these bigger downtown buildings where people are renting out these rent, going on Airbnb and putting their units up and the condo association has no clue and the only way you can actually figure this out is one chase it on the website which isn't which isn't very productive or very you know uh, it isn't easy to do or two chase after the after the rollers the guys with the people rolling rolling down the hallway with their with their luggage uh, you know and that's obviously not gonna uh, not a good way of handling it so I think that transparency is a key component finding out the, the right framework in terms of what should be uh, the proper mechanism you know we have we have some issue with in particular with buildings that are being just rented out and never be no one's actually staying in them so someone's going into a, a unit renting it out and then just putting it on Airbnb every single day making money which is completely legal at this point in time but actually not not actually uh, uh, ever staying in there that hurts the housing stock particularly in this neighborhood you know I mean if you, if you if you're taking up an entire building of Airbnbs then it becomes it becomes an issue uh, you know in terms of people that want to live here and want to be invested in the neighborhood uh, so I think trying to strike the right balance and find the right approach on that is still something we're working on and we're looking at other other states and other cities and what they're doing <coughs> is there another municipality that you've modeled something out you know I, I think there are a lot of good in a lot of different this house Chicago just passed something uh, recently uh, a couple months ago, that was pretty good. I think Santa Monica uh, did had a nice piece, but I think there are other. But it has. It's going to have to be a little bit unique to Massachusetts and to Boston in particular. Uh, any other questions on the Airbnb? Yeah. Um, is there a way that you can work with the legislation? I mean, like, so if I rent a unit, I can lease it out, lease it out, rent it out with that anyone, right? So if I don't own the building, I can just rent out my unit. Your person. Yeah. You're yeah. Living, you're living yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're not we're not going to try. We're not going to we're not going to stifle the, that this new ability, this new way of doing of traveling, new way of doing business. I think it's it's important to allow it to thrive. I think it has had, has brought some more positives than I originally thought of. Uh, but I think we do have to kind of figure out what that mechanism is and what the right line is. Yeah, I was just going to say, as far as the transparency goes, is there a way that you can like convince it or get it so that way owners have to have it permitted like in their building? Uh, I mean, it, I mean, it, no, I mean, if, if they, if I, I think that we would probably do it from the back end more than if you you wanted to host, you wanted to be a short-term rental host, then you would have to get signed off by by the owner or by you know, I mean, but instead of the other way around, instead of the owner saying what then do, I think it would be, would be more the other way around. I believe there's also there's a liability problem when you roll and they got place and something happens. Yes, that's responsible. You want to um, I think that the most important thing, especially in this neighborhood, is the safety of the, the other neighbors, the children, this elderly. Um, are you able to write in some very strict vetting uh, procedures into the legislation, or is that it won't be part of it? So that they would have to do credit checks or background checks on, on, on the people that are coming in and out that don't have a key or a super key to these small buildings that don't have security, uh, are you going to allow for security? What, what kind of we're, 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 we're looking at We're looking at the background check piece. I don't have the credit check, I'm not really sure. We would, we would be, we would be uh, able to. At least to. a background check. But maybe, maybe, I, mean, I, I think it's, it's again, again, it's a line we're trying to figure out what the, what the, what the right place to fall on is, because you're right, I mean, it is, there is a safety issue and concern. Uh, in the same breath, allowing someone to do, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that might be the, on the owner's, uh, you know, responsibility, building owner's responsibility, or on the condo association's responsibility in terms of how they want to framework it. Um, but we are looking at that. And other, some other cities and states have done some things, but 
I don't think anybody's done a full background check. I, I have to go verify, don't quote me on that, but I don't think I don't think anybody's actually done a full background check in terms of the people that are coming in. Uh, but let me let me check into that and I'll have a better answer. Well, only because I mean we have a unique situation here. We don't have concierge, we you know, people are coming and going and they usually just put a super key or um, a, a padlock and you <coughs> can have a code to get in and now and get the front door key. And once they're in the building, you know, you don't know who these people are. I think that there should be some sort of that in that's mandatory at least. Okay. Well, I'll, we'll look into it. I mean, it's not, I, I completely get what you're, what, you're, what you're saying and I understand it. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that, certainly. Anyone else want to answer? Answer? Uh, move on to one, one last piece. Um, uh, it's a, a piece of legislation that we filed uh, late in the end of session. It hasn't passed yet, but I wanted to come to uh, both neighborhood groups to, to give an understanding of what, what we were filing, what the intent was when we filed it. Uh, it is a it is to uh, open up an exclusive negotiation between Mass DOT and the and the direct abutters of a property on that sits in front of Mother Anna's. Uh, on the corner of Hanover and Cross Street, the one that basically the vacant piece of land that you know, between Mother Anna's and the, and the Tony DeMarco statue. Uh, to give a little history around this, that property was, was used as staging during the Central Artery uh, Tunnel project uh, and uh, was uh, basically right up to Mother Anna's property for, for over 10 years of uh, being used as, as a, uh, a, during the big day. Uh, it, it has laid vacant for 10 years, or. 12 years now since the big thing has been over. And uh, Mass DOT put out an RFP back in, I want to say January or February, related to this property at, and set the price of $1.6 million. Uh, not one person bid on this property, uh, which got me frustrated in the sense that I'd like to see this pro this property be start moving because it is a gateway property to the neighborhood. Uh, you know, 75 to 80% of the people that come into the North End for the first time first thing they see is is, Han is is the corner of Hanover Street and Cross on both sides. And so, I, I mean, in, in both of those properties, meaning anything that's been on Cross Street and the piece of property that's been in front of here, has frustrated me greatly that that hasn't, that neither of those have kind of have laid kind of the way they are for a long period of time, ever since the ever since the artery went down. Uh, so, we, I, we decided to, to try to move the ball forward. And one of the problems, with, one of the hard issues with dealing with this, uh, pr uh, this parcel is the fact that it is right over the tunnel. So it's very limited in terms of what can be built there because you cannot build underneath, and you have a certain obviously the North End guidelines of, on zoning uh, leave it to it, you know, because everything you're going to do on the uh, on the basement floor would have to be on the first floor, and it minimizes what can actually be built there. Uh, it is my belief that that Mother Anna's, the, the people that own Mother Anna's, and the build that they've they've been there for, you know, generations, uh, and fought through the through the, through the, the, the trouble of the big day. Uh, and we're able to survive, and I, and, and I think that they, because no one actually bid on this property originally, I think they should have an opportunity to have an exclusive kind of discussion with Mass DOT. It's not giving the property to Mother Anna's, but it is allowing them to have exclusive negotiation rights for six months directly with Mass DOT. And if they can't come to an agreement with Mass DOT, then so be it. Then the, then the prop, then that then that happens, and it will and it will move on, uh, and they'll have to probably reopen it to another RFP. Uh, you know, the, the belief is, and from my perspective, is that these, these people went through a lot during the big thing. Uh, and since no one else has really tried to bid on this, I think they, they deserve the right to have an option of trying to, you know, work something out for themselves uh, with the property itself. Uh, I've seen that they, they've showed me, you know, uh, plans that are, um, you know, sketches, they're not, they're not real, you know, long-term plans. If they, if they were to get the, if they were to come to an agreement with Mass DOT, it would still have to go through Article 80. And, and uh, the regular uh, process through the uh, through the zoning process, so you know that that w what they would want to develop would still have to come to the neighborhood and have that debate discussion. Uh, and I'm not saying that I, you know, I'm open to hearing you know what those what those discussions would be, uh, but I think their property would be very tasteful for what would or what their project would be would be very tasteful for what uh, uh, would would potentially go there uh, and as a gateway as a gateway parcel to the neighborhood. So it's something that we filed that hasn't passed yet. It is, it is most likely going to be passed before the end of the year, uh, but I wanted to make sure that uh, before it passed, the community had heard about it and there was no, uh, no surprises when, uh, if, the, if it were able to get done. So uh, open up for questions on that as well, or comments. I mean, just generally, obviously, we're, we're concerned about that area as well as directly across it, which we had the special meeting here previously. So we're, we're certainly shared the viewpoint that 
as a gateway to the neighborhood, it needs to be adequately represented as such. So, can you share us what? Can you share with us what Mother Anna's uh, plan potentially is if they do get the land? Um, it is. It is. Uh, you know, I don't want to. Again, I don't want to speak for them. Right. Uh, but it is a, uh, a project that would add on to the building that they currently have and have first floor um, uh, space for their uh, for their restaurant with uh, kind of like almost like a, um, uh, a, a place that could have outdoor seating during outdoor seating during the summer but closed in, indoor during the winter. So expansion of the restaurant. Expansion of the restaurant and expansion of the building itself, uh, but not the entire parcel. So it's like it's like a half of the half of the building and then half the, the expansion of the restaurant. And at the end of the day, if it, something something if something does go if something was to go there, I think it would be, you know, it would be something of a similar variety in, in some sorts, you know, for it to be developed. Anyone else on the council? Have any, anyone from the audience have any questions for the state Thank you. Oh. Can I ask you one? <laughs> If, if we can get the Rizal Center for the first week of December, on Monday or a Tuesday night, we get it out here that we'd like to have, we, we, we want to have a meeting of the nursing home. Would you come? Yeah. Sorry, you know me. Okay. I'll go anywhere. We'll have to answer all the questions. Well, that's with the intention of having them here again. So we, we got them here. This way, before. they know we're not. Oh, you might want to check with them because he says it's only waiting for to come here. We we, we will uh, we will talk yeah, to David. Well, I don't want to duplicate it too. No, of course. Well, we you're welcome. Yo, yo, any questions? Sure. If I have the money, I buy the nursing home myself. Oh, you would, because I don't sleep there. All right. Well, thank you all. I appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you so much.